let's bring the notion of expectation to continuous random variables. So remember for discrete random variable, we define the expected value to be the weighted sum of x according to the PMF value. So sum of x times the PMF over the range of x. So for continuous random variable, what we're gonna do is just replace sums with integrals. So in this case, we're gonna have the expected value to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x times the PDF of x. Okay, and so the range is simpler in this case, it's just gonna be the whole real line, minus infinity to infinity. And um, what, one thing that might slightly bother you here is we have different definitions for discrete and continuous. And just let me say that um, there is an overall uh, unifying definition, but it's beyond the scope of this course. Okay, so we're just seeing two instances of that unifying uh, idea here. All right, we can do the same for the expected value of a function. So let's say we want e of g of x for a continuous random variable x. Again, we're just going to replace the integral, sorry, the sum with an integral. So I have integral from minus infinity to infinity, g of x, pdf, dx. So this formula will still hold even if g of x is not a continuous random variable. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, imagine that I am taking a continuous random variable and I'm discretizing it, so it just gives me values that are either minus one or plus one. Then it's no longer continuous, but this integral form formula will still make sense. Okay, we'll see an example of that towards the end. Let's just do some properties before we jump into examples. So let's talk about, again, linearity of expectation. We've been seeing this already for a while, but we should remember it. So if I have constants a and b, and I try to take the expectation of ax plus b, then I can pull out the a and b. Why can I do this? Well, look at the definition. So I plug in the function ax plus b into the PDF, sorry, into the expectation formula. And so now I have an integral. I'm going to split it into two cases. For the first one, I'll pull out the a. And for the second one, I'll pull out the b, right? So I've just opened this formula up. So I multiplied out ax times the PDF and b times the PDF and pulled out a and b. For this first time, term, I recognize the integral is the expectation. And for the second term, I recognize that by normalization, I just get one. Okay, and I'm done. That's why the formula works. The variance and standard deviation are actually just defined in exactly the same way we defined them before. The variance is the expectation of x minus its mean squared. I could also write as the expectation of x squared minus the square of the expectation, right? And so the expectation is defined in terms of an integral, but once I'm writing it in this abstract way, I just reuse the same definition of variance and standard deviation, but when I'm digging down to do calculations, I'm using integrals instead of sums. We also get that the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. Okay, and we also finally get that the variance of a linear function for any constants a and b, I ignore the shift from b and I get a squared. So I get that ax plus b has variance a squared times the variance of x. Okay, so let's kind of start playing around with these things, let's take an example and let's try to work out different quantities involving the expectation. But first, let me let me just draw that. Okay, I'm gonna start by drawing the CDF for you. Oh, sorry, the PDF. Here's the PDF. So the PDF is zero for a while, then it goes up with slope one, so it's x, okay, up to value one. Then it's gonna go back down, so two minus x, it has slope minus one, and then it's gonna be flat, okay, for x greater than or equal to two. So this is the, the setup I'm going to be working with for quite a while. And, you know, before we get into expectation, which we just defined, I'm going to take one more opportunity to do a CDF calculation. And the reason I want to do this is that these things can be a little bit tricky, as we saw in the previous video. So I just want to give you another opportunity to say, see the same thing. Okay, so let's determine the CDF. Let's even just recall the formula for that. So I take the CDF formula which is just integrating the PDF up to X. And I'm gonna use U as my integration variable here. It's gonna get integrated out. Okay, and I have to remember, I have to do this case by case, depending on where the integral stops. Okay, so the easiest case is gonna be the first one. So if I'm coming in from the left, then if X is less than zero, I'm just integrating zero. So I'm gonna get that the CDF is going to be the integral from minus infinity to X and I just hit zero the whole way, so this integral is just zero. Gets interesting once I get between x's, between zero and one. So there, I'm gonna integrate for a while until I hit zero. I'm still 
at PDF zero, then I'm going to have slope one. So I have u du, and then I work out the integral. So I have zero plus a half u squared from zero to x. So I get a half x squared. Okay, and now when I'm between one and two, I'm going to have a three part integral here. So I'm going to first integrate for a while where it's just zero. We just did that. And then I'm going to have another part where it's between zero and one, where I'm passing through the slope one part, right? So I fully pass through the slope one part. And then I'm going to be going back down in the slope minus one part, where I'm integrating from uh, one to x, okay? And then I have two minus u du. So I'm going to work out all these terms. The first one's zero. The second one is a half u squared from zero to one. And the third one is two u minus a half u squared from one to x, okay? I'm going to plug in for all of these. So I'm going to have zero again, plus a half, plus two x, minus a half, uh, x squared plus, sorry, minus two plus a half. And I'm going to get minus a half x squared plus two x minus one. And finally, for this last part where I'm greater than two, I'm not going to do any work because I know I've passed through the whole PDF, right? So I should have the value one because I've already integrated the entire PDF, which normalizes to one. So I don't need to do the work of computing the four part integral just to verify that it's one. Okay. That is it. So now let's move back along to doing um, expected values and probabilities. So first let's do probabilities. Okay, so uh, let's say I want to calculate the probability, probability of an interval. Okay, so first of all, let me just write down and summarize the CDF that we just worked out. So here it is. So these are all the different cases that we just worked out. And I'm interested in understanding the probability of landing in a particular interval. So that's what we're going to do again, just as kind of a warm up in practice. So let's determine the probability that we fall, let's say, between um, three fourths and five fourths. Okay. And I'm inclusive on the left and the right, but it doesn't matter as we've seen. So this is the probability of an interval formula. So I plug into the CDF at five fourths and subtract the CDF at three fourths. It's the difference in heights, right? So at five fourths, I'm between one and two. So I plug into the formula minus a half x squared plus two x minus one. I plug in five fourths of that. And then for three fourths, I'm between zero and one. So I just plug into a half x squared. I work out all these terms. I get minus 25 over 32 plus five halves minus one minus nine 30 seconds. So equals, you know, that's gonna be three halves minus 34 over 32. That's 14 over 32, and that's going to be 7 over 16. So the exact numbers aren't that interesting. It's just that I could use the fact that I've already calculated the CDF to take the difference in heights. Okay, so that was just a re review of probability calculations. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to do expected values. All right, so here I am. I'm going to try to determine the expected value. Before I do any calculation, I should just try to guess what it is. Okay, so what does it seem like it should be? Okay, so just take a moment and try to understand what you think it should be. So the plot looks kind of symmetric and it's symmetric about one. So from the plot, I expect it to be one. That seems to be the center of mass, right? And all we're gonna see is that works out from the calculation. So I'm gonna come to my formula. I'm gonna take the integral of X times the PDF from minus infinity to infinity. And I'm going to get, unfortunately, a four-part integral. And this is a simple example. So you can imagine these things can get out of hand pretty quickly. So I'm just writing out my integral terms here. And I have all these four terms, right? So the only difference from what I was doing before with the probability calculation is now in every term, I have this extra term x. So I have x times 0, x times x, x times 2 minus x, and x times 0 again. And I have these four different regions of integration. Okay, and remember in this class, this kind of um, you know formula is fine for your answer in a homework and an exam. You don't need to go all the way to work out the, um, the actual values, but here we're gonna do that just so that we can get some intuition. Okay, so this first integral is gonna be zero. The second one is gonna be a third x cubed, a value from zero to one. The next one is gonna be x squared minus a third x cubed from one to two. And the last one is again gonna be zero. Okay, so I'm going to plug in, I'm going to get a big mess. So I'm going to get a third plus two squared minus a third two cubed minus one 
squared minus a third, one cubed, and that's going to be four minus one plus a third minus eight thirds plus one third, which is one. And it's okay if you didn't follow it, it's just important that what we got, the answer one, matches with our intuition, which is the center of mass. Okay, let's go ahead and look out for a uh, function, so the expected value of a function. Let's try x squared. So what do I do when I want to take the expectation of x squared? I just plug into my uh, formula here. So I have x squared times the PDF, and I take the integral. So I just have the same thing that I had above, except all I'm doing is everywhere I put in an x, and the first time I'm replacing it with an x squared. So I'm just writing out these four parts of the integral, the four different regions, and I'm just putting x squared times the PDF in that region. Okay, so I'm going to have to work this out. Again, it would be fine to just kind of leave your answer like this um, on your homework or the exam. You wouldn't even have to tell me that these two parts are zero, but we're going to work out the whole thing. Okay, so the first part is going to be a fourth x to the four from zero to one. The next part is going to be two thirds x cubed minus a fourth x to the four from one to two. Okay, so I can plug in this first part is just going to be a fourth, so the zero goes away. The next part is 16 thirds minus four for the two minus two thirds minus a fourth for the one. So I get all these things combining, I get a half plus 16 minus 12 minus two over three, and that happens to be seven sixths. Okay, again, just some, you know, simplifying of these fractions. And finally, what I want to do is calculate the variance, okay? So the nice thing about having the second moment, which we just calculated, is it simplifies my calculation for the variance considerably. In fact, I already have all the terms I need. So I can use this formula that it's ex squared minus the square of ex. And I already have both of those. So I really just take 7 sixths, which I worked out, minus 1 squared. So it's a sixth. OK, so I don't need to go and redo any integrals since I've already worked out these two terms that I needed if I use this alternate formula. Okay, as a final um, example, let's look at a case where I'm trying to work out the integral for a particular function here, or the expected value of a particular function, which happens to discretize my continuous random variable, meaning that when it's less than a half, it's minus one, when it's between half and three halves, it's zero, and above three halves, it's plus one. Okay, so this is the function g of x, I'm drawing it for you. It's minus one for a while, then it jumps up, it's zero, then it jumps up again, it's one. Okay, how do I get this? I want to know the expected value of this function according to the PDF of x. Okay, well, I just follow the formula that I have. So the expected value of g of x is the integral of g of x times the PDF of x. And so now all I'm going to do is just go case by case and plug in the values of both g of x and the PDF of x. And this is going to be a little bit annoying because there are going to be quite a few cases because x ha PDF has four regions and g has three regions and I have to kind of look to see where they overlap and intersect. So first I'm going to have this region from going from negative infinity to zero. Okay. And there the important thing is that the PDF is zero. Okay. So then this term is going to go away. So I don't even worry about the fact that g of x has value minus 1 there. It's just that the PDF is 0. Now I go from 0 up to a half. Why a half? Because that's where the value of g changes. Okay, so I'm going to put in minus 1, because it hasn't changed yet, times x. And the reason I put in x is between 0 and 1, the PDF has value x. Next, I'm going to go up to, from a half to one, where the PDF changes values. Okay, so I go from half to one, and I have zero times x times d of x. And after this, I'm going to be in the two minus x region. Okay, so I'm going to write the integral from one up to three halves, which is where g remains stable. So zero times two minus x dx. And finally, I'm going to have between three halves and two, and that's going to be plus 1 times 2 minus x. And finally, finally, so actually the last term is going to be from 2 up to infinity, where the PDF is again 0. Okay, so you can kind of rewind and go back and play this out uh, case by case, but just note that there are really six different parts that I have to watch out for. Okay, so a lot of these are 0, so I'm just going to cross out all the terms where I'm multiplying by 0 that I don't need to work out. 
Still got a couple of terms to work out, so I'm going to be left with two integrals. And I'm just going to start plugging into them. Okay, so it turns out that this first one is going to be minus one times a half x squared between zero and a half, and the second one is going to be plus one times two to the x, sorry, two x minus a half x squared from three halves to two. Okay, and just plugging into that, I get minus an eighth plus four minus two minus three minus nine eighths. And if you go through and simplify, you'll see that it's just zero. And if you stare at the plots above for a little while, you'll see that there actually is some symmetry about one, right? So it actually makes sense that since both G and F are symmetric about one and G actually has then average value zero. Okay, so that's it for expectation of continuous random variables.